Welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, an emergency physician, and today we're going to talk about STEMIs, ST elevation myocardial infarcts. So let's get into it. The presentation depends pretty much on which vessel is obstructed. Let's have a look first of all at the left side of the heart. So the left side of the heart is supplied by the left main coronary artery, which divides into the left circumflex and the left anterior descending. If you obstruct at the level of the left coronary, like this sort of one, then you've got a lot of the myocardium of the left ventricle that's been affected. And your ECG looks like this. It's pretty ugly. ST elevation anteriorly, laterally, ST depression inferiorly, to what's called the widow maker. Now if we go further down and say we're going to be obstructed at the left anterior descending, well you've still got a lot of the left ventricle that's been infarcting, but it's not as much, you're less chance to come in with cardiogenic shock and pulmonary edema. So your ECG looks a bit like this, still pretty ugly, ST elevation, anterior, all the anterior leads. What about if we actually obstructed it in the left circumflex, just around here? Well here it supplies the lateral aspect of the heart, of the left ventricle, so not surprisingly it's less of the ventricular mass and therefore you don't tend to come in with cardiogenic shock and pulmonary edema. Uh, you will on the ECG see something like this, ST elevation 1, AVL, the lateral leads. Okay, let's move away from the left side and we'll go and look at the right side because it presents quite a lot differently. So remember that the right coronary artery supplies the right ventricle. And of course it's got branches to the SA node, to the AV node, and marginal branches, etc. And if it's a dominant right coronary, you can go right posteriorly. Now, if we obstruct the right coronary artery, right approximately up here, we're going to get a fair bit of the right ventricle infarcted. And this is the sort of ECG we'll see. So you can see there's ST elevation inferiorly, 2, 3 AVF, and also there's ST depression, V1, V2, V3. These patients will come in with a dry chest, but they'll be hypotensive and will respond to, you know, 500 mils of normal sale on bolus. You can then do that and reassess it. Okay. If I got an infarct like that, if I got an obstructive vessel, I don't care which vessel, what do I want? Well, my number one priority would be, let's get a cardiac cath as soon as possible and do an angioplasty plus or minus stent. If I'm more than an hour away from a place that can do a cath and an angioplasty, then give me thrombolysis. I'm a little bit over 60 kilos, so to take the plays, 50 milligrams of IV would be perfect. Remember to check for contraindications. Now what else is there? We've talked about the different presentations between a left ventricle and a right ventricle will be mainly affected. What else do we have to remember? Well, we have to give some pain relief, but be careful when the hypotensive gives small amounts of intravenous narcotic. Aspirin, 150 milligrams orally. Uh, the ambulance is often given on the way in. If you're going to be going to a cath lab, clopidogrel, 300 milligrams. 300 milligrams, that's four 75 milligram tablets. And that's to thin out the blood before you go to cath lab. Uh, anything else? Well, you might need to have BiPAP for your pulmonary edema in those with cardiogenic shock. And additionally to that, if it's me, feel free to give me oxygen as my myocardium is slowly dying. Okay. So that's pretty much it for uh, STEMIs. We're going to have emergency medicine in one cup of coffee. Thank you very much. Cheers.